multi-step problems. Volume problems often require the application of several steps to solve. That's because many three-dimensional shapes are not regular. All you have to do to solve these problems is separate the shapes into their composite shapes and then put them together for a solution. For example, we have a shape here that requires the use of several steps to solve. We have a large rectangular prism that has a notch cut out of the top. You'll notice that the top is also a rectangular prism, it's just much smaller. My strategy requires finding the volume of the larger prism first. In order to find the volume of the larger prism, I'm going to use what I know about rectangular prisms. I know the volume of a prism is length times width times height. If I look at my figures, the dimensions are printed here. The length is 4 inches. The width is 3 fourths of an inch. And the height is 3 inches. So the volume of this particular large prism without the cutout would be 4 inches times 3 fourths of an inch times 3 inches. I'll use what I know about fractions to do some canceling to simplify my problem, and I find that the volume of the larger prism without the cutout would be 9 cubic inches. Now if I look for the volume of the smaller prism, I'm going to use the same strategy. I know that it's a rectangular prism, so it's going to have the same volume. The volume will be the length times the width times the height. In this particular case, I'm going to look for the dimensions, and I'll have that the length is 1 half of an inch, the width is again 3 quarters of an inch, it has the same width as the last figure did, and the height is 1 quarter of an inch. Now you can choose to solve these problems either using fractions or using decimals, whichever one seems most appropriate. In this case I have 1 times 3 times 1, which is 3, over 2 times 4 times 4, which is 32. This would give me 3 30 seconds of a cubic inch. I don't really know what that means, so I want to do this as a decimal instead. I realize that 1 half inch is the same as 0.5 inches, 3 quarters of an inch is the same as 0.75 inches, and 1 quarter of an inch is the same as 0.25 inches. If I multiply those together, I find that they're about equal to 0 0.09 cubic inches. 0 0.09 cubic inches has approximately the same value as 3 30 seconds of a cubic inch. Now my strategy required for me to take the larger minus the smaller to find the resulting volume. I'm going to take 9 minus 0 0.09, which will give me a final volume of 8.91 cubic inches. What I have found is the volume of this rectangular prism with a notch cut out of the top. I used a several step strategy. I found the volume of the larger, I found the volume of the smaller, I found the larger to be 9 cubic inches and the smaller to be about 0.09 cubic inches. And when I subtracted, I found the resulting volume to be 8.91 cubic inches. Once again, you know the strategies for each one of these steps. Your problem solving skills will help you to put the steps together to come up with a satisfactory solution. Another example of a multi-step volume problem is illustrated right here. Imagine that this is a piece of extruded plastic that's been pulled into a cylinder shape with a square hole in the center. I want to know exactly how much plastic has been used to make this particular shape. The outside of the shape is cylindrical. I, have, I can tell from the top view it's got a round base. So I have a cylinder with a round base on the top and on the bottom. The hole that is absent in the middle is a square. It's actually going to be a square prism that is 2 inches by 2 inches and it goes the whole entire length of this particular figure. As a problem solving strategy, I'd like to find the volume of the cylinder if it were solid. I'm going to find, pretend that this hole isn't even here, and I'm going to find the volume as if that hole did not exist. Then I'll find the volume of this hole as it runs the length of this entire figure, and I'll subtract it from the volume of the cylinder. The result will give me the amount of plastic that's used in making this piece. I know if I'm finding the volume of a cylinder, I need to use the formula pi r squared h. Now in this case, I'm not given the, the radius readily, I'm given the diameter, but it's not hard to find. I know if the diameter is 6, the radius is half as long, or 3. So the volume of this particular piece would be pi times 3 squared times the height of the figure, which is 9 inches. In other words, I have pi times 9 times 9. This tells me how much plastic would be used if this were a solid figure rather than one with a hole in it. I'll use my calculator and I'll multiply 3.14 times 9 times 9. And I'll get a total volume of 254.34.
and I want to remember to check my figure, and I see that it's in inches, so 254.34 cubic inches. That's how much plastic would be used if this were a solid piece. The next thing I want to do is find out what the volume of the hole is in the center of the circle. This is a prism, it has a square base, and it has a height equal to the height of this entire figure. So if I'm finding the volume of that prism, I know that I'm going to take length times width times height. In this case, the volume would be 2 times 2 times 9. If I multiply those together, I get 36 cubic inches. Now I know the volume of the big cylinder is 254.34, and I know the volume of the empty space on the inside, it's 36. So the final step in this problem is to take the volume of the cylinder, 254.34, and subtract the volume of the hole, the missing part of that, which turned out to be 36, is equal to 218.34 cubic inches. Once again, I used many steps to solve this problem. I found the volume of the cylinder as if it were solid. I found the volume of the hole that's missing in the center. And I took the volume of the cylinder minus the volume of the hole and came up with a total volume of plastic of 218.34 cubic inches. This is a slab for a new house. How many cubic yards of concrete needs to be ordered for this slab? The slab measures 45 feet by 60 feet, and it is 4 inches deep. Notice the slab has footings to reinforce the slab. There are four footings that measure 60 feet by 18 inches by 30 inches, and five footings that measure 45 feet by 18 inches by 30 inches. Let's do the math. We want to find how much concrete is needed for the slab. And notice there's a slab and there's also footings. And when they build a house or, or factory floor, they just don't lay a, a slab down. They put footings in there to reinforce the concrete. And so you have these footings. And also there's footings across in the center. And so this gives you a very strong foundation for a house. And this particular House is four inch slab is a thickness. And let's figure the volume, how much concrete needs to be ordered to pour this here slab for this house. Now we have a problem here. We have this is 45 feet the slab by 60 feet, but it's four inches thick. And remember, we have to either make everything inches or everything in feet. We have the same problem here in the footings. This is 60 foot by 18 inches, 30 inches, and 45 feet by 18 inches and 30 inches. So let's convert everything into feet. So 4 inches equals 0.333. We'll use that, just keeps on going on. And we'll make that 0.333 feet. 18 inches equals 1.5 feet. You divide 12 into 18. And 30, and we'll just show you here, over here, 30 divided by 12 equals 2.5. So 30 inches equals 2.5 feet. Now we have all our dimensions in feet. Now we can plug in the numbers. So volume equals length times width times the height. So let's find the dimension for the slab first. So the volume of the slab equals the length is 60 times the width, which is 45, times the height, which is 0.333. Let's plug in the numbers here. Is 60 times 45 times 0.333 equals 899.1. So this equals the volume equals 899 cubic feet. Now let's find the footings. Now we have here with the footings notice, it's 60 feet by 18 by 30 and 45 feet by 18 by 30. So these two are the same. 
So we have 4 times 60 is, is 240 feet, and 5 times 45 is 225 feet. And so that's 5, 6, 465 feet of footing measuring 18 inches by 30 inches, or 1.5 feet by 2.5 feet. Now let's find the volume for all the nine footings that are in this slab. So volume equals L times width times the height. Volume equals the length is 465 times the, the width, which is 1.5 times the height, which is 2.5. Let's plug in the numbers here. 465 times 1.5 times 2.5 equals, that equals 1,744. So volume equals 1,744 cubic feet. And so let's add up these two numbers together. Let's just get that number in there so we round it off. 1744 plus 899 equals, so the total volume equals 2643 cubic feet of concrete. But remember the question is how many cubic yards? They don't sell concrete in cubic feet, they sell it in cubic yards. And remember again, a cubic yard is is 3 feet by 3 feet by 3 feet. So 3 times 3 is 9. 9 times 3 is 27 cubic feet makes 1 cubic yard. So we have to divide this number by 27 and that will give you 97.88 so it's volume equals 98 cubic yards of concrete are needed to pour this here slab. Please pause the video now and complete the problems in your workbook. When finished, press play and we'll continue with the next lesson.